Welcome to the College Football Bros. I am Michael Newman. I'm Ryan Newman. And I'm Trey Newman. All right. On today's episode, we are going to rank the best coordinator hires of the offseason. We're going to do it as a team, and we've just kind of divvied up each spot. So, Trey, we have assigned you to be first. You got to tell us who's our number one coordinator hire of the offseason. Number one, I had to go with Garrett Riley going from TCU to Clemson as their offensive coordinator. Uh, you know, he just won the Broyles Award, of course, had amazing success last year. You know, Max Duggan nearly won the Heisman, turned him into a great quarterback. You know, I know Sonny Dykes had his fingerprints, of course, on the offense, but but Riley knows offense too, of course. Um, he led that unit last year. He led SMU's prolific offense before that. Um, he played quarterback in Leach's system, so he's familiar with, you know, kind of the air raid principles. But he's not just air raid because last year TCU ran the ball very well. Kendra Miller ran for over 1,000 yards. Duggan ran the ball a lot. I guess it was just more surprising on the Clemson end, you know, for Dabo to, to kind of venture out of the Clemson family. Um, and he just knows that he probably couldn't afford to to not develop another blue chip guy. Like, you know, with DJU, it didn't quite work out. Now they got Club Nick. So I think it it could be a great hire. Yeah. Sometimes you question a, a coordinator who's coaching under uh, a great head coach on that side of, of the ball, right? Like, like you said, Dyke's an offensive guy, but, but Riley called the plays. So I, I, I don't think there's, there's that doubt there. Uh, number two, I'm going to take Phil Longo going from North Carolina to Wisconsin as their offensive coordinator. And this of course represents a, a big shift for Wisconsin, yeah. just what they're used to. He does run the ball successfully, his offense. It's not like they're just a complete air raid or anything like that. Um, but hopefully you're going to pair now a great running game with an explosive passing game, spread it out a little bit more. So I think this gives Wisconsin a, a higher ceiling as a program running this style of offense. And it's already paid dividends on the I guess the the recruiting trail in terms of transfers, they got some really good skill talent transfers, including well, a lot of quarterbacks, but Tanner yeah. Mordecai from SMU, the big one. He's already a proven proven guy. So I think, you know, that's their their offense is going to be going to be way better than than yeah. last year. That's for hard sure. not to. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, that was a good one. Uh, you guys had to, and this guy I have at number three. Um, I kind of had these guys all bunched up. You could have picked either one of them, and I would have been like, yeah, that's cool. Uh, Sean Lewis, uh, the new offensive coordinator for Colorado. He was previously Kent State's head coach. Um, so nice, nice hire here for Colorado. He's led some really good offenses uh, wherever he's been, and particularly now Kent, Kent last at Kent State. Um, but before that, it was Syracuse, Bowling Green. Um, so his quarterback at at Kent State for the, the most of the time that he was there was Dustin Crum. He was the most outstanding player of that league, the MAC. Um, and then back when he was at Bowling Green, his quarterback there, same deal, or at least he was offensive player of the year. So, I mean, he's known for developing quarterbacks, getting great offenses there. Um, but it's not just the passing game. He actually has a really good r running at rushing attack, which I think is huge for Colorado. So that's a that's pretty much a home run hire for Deion uh, Sanders, in my opinion. Indeed. All right, moving on to number four, Bobby Petrino, Texas A&M's new offensive coordinator. I don't know. I, it's early in the offseason, but I've managed to to talk myself into Petrino at A&M. Uh, maybe this is a reach at number four here. I don't know. But, you know, it is undeniable how good of an offensive coach he, he has been. Um, he coached Lamar Jackson to the Heisman at Louisville, had some good offenses at Arkansas. And then, you know, go be going back to his first stint at Louisville, the early to you know mid 2000s, he turned out potent offense after potent offense. And when you look at A&M, their offense has been a little bit stuck in the mud. They have they show some flashes, but it's been a little little stale with Jimbo the last couple of years. Not a ton of explosiveness. Uh, you know, Jimbo still has a good offensive mind, but now I think between him and Petrino kind of working together, it could be a good match and, and get that Aggie offense kickstarted. Yeah, yeah, they needed a change, and I agree. I think it was a, a good hire. We're going to continue the run on offensive coordinators here. I promise we got some defensive guys coming up, but I am going to take number five, Kendall Bryles, going from Arkansas to TCU. And yeah, as an offensive coordinator, he has made pretty much 
every offense he's been at better. Uh, Florida Atlantic and Houston made massive jumps under him and his only it's he was only at each of those spots for one year but they were great years compared to the previous and then his most recent stint at arkansas took over an offense that was 108th and 103rd the two previous years in espn's offensive metrics uh when he was there they were 40th 24th and 26th so i know it seems like now that he's leaving some arkansas fans aren't you know uh they're not missing him too much or they don't think they will but I don't know. I, I think he's he's a really good coach. And of course, with uh, working with Sonny Dykes, I'm sure they're going to continue <laughs> to have great offenses. Yeah, no, Browse is he's proven and he's done it all over the place now. So that was a good one. Um, all right. Here is our first defensive coordinator that we're talking about. We got Tony White, uh, the new defensive coordinator at Nebraska, our, our team here. Um, he came from Syracuse where he was the defensive coordinator for the past few seasons. Um, he's a Rocky long, uh, disciple. So he's runs that three, three, five kind of aggressive defense and boy, it's worked for him. Um, last couple years at, at Syracuse, he fielded about a top 25 defense, but when he first got to Syracuse, I mean, they were really, really young. They had a super young squad. He played like, I think he had like six freshmen that were like, like kind of freshman all conference or kind of played really well and, and at a young age here, but then quickly turned them around and got them to, to plan in, you know, top level. And that, that second year he was there, they were top 30 in both passing and rushing defense. One of only eight schools that could claim it that year. So immediately turned them around. Um, there might be a bit of a, a, a bit of a learning curve here for Nebraska just because of his unique style and the fact that Nebraska loses a bunch, but I do think he's going to eventually have field a much better defense than Nebraska has been able to do. For quite a while so i thought it was a, a good defensive coordinator hire yep all right going back to the offensive side robert and i um going to nc state you know with with tim beck i feel like nc state kind of underachieved with with devin leary it just felt like they they could have been a little bit better uh i think Anai is a great hire uh he did an outstanding job with bronco mendenhall at byu then at virginia recently spent it a little brief time at, at Syracuse, but you know, at Virginia a couple years ago, Brennan Armstrong had a massive year. Virginia finished third in, in total offense that year. But before that they had Kurt Bankert and Bryce Perkins ha were having big years. Like you look at Perkins, he wasn't a great, you know, pure quarterback, but incredibly productive somehow led them to the orange bowl in an eyes offense. Uh, and then he had a list of guys at, at BYU that were productive, like Tanner Morgan, Taysom Hill, you can, can name a few more. Tanner, so. Tanner Mangum. Tanner Mangum, yeah. There we oh, go. Did that, what did I say? Tanner, Tanner Morgan, Morgan, Minnesota. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was not Tanner Morgan. <laughs> was Tanner yeah. Morgan. But, uh, but yeah, so I like the hire of an eye. Yeah, and now he's pairing back up with Brennan Armstrong, yeah. so that should, should work out pretty well, I think. Um, okay, my next pick here, I'll go back to defense. I'm going to take Lance Guidry, defensive coordinator, now at... Miami and he had a, a few uh, successful stints at, at lower levels and last year took the defensive coordinator job at Marshall and I thought was did one of the more underrated jobs in all of college football last year I think he should have been uh, you could argue he, he should have won the Broyles award for, for what he did with that defense they were legit top 10 in SP plus FPI like they were you know opponent adjusted actually you know one of the the, the 10 or so best defenses in the country and then he uh quickly was was hired to tulane and then was only there very very briefly and now yeah of course miami came calling so uh yeah i think this is a a really good hire and i think their defense should i mean if if, if he can do anything like he did at marshall they'll they'll take an immediate jump it won't be hard to do defense wasn't very good last year at miami no but they do have some players so i, I do think it's a it's a good hire as well um, all right, moving on. Uh, we've got a big one here. Uh, Tommy Reese, new offensive coordinator at Alabama. Of course, he's coming from the same position as from uh, at Notre Dame. You know, I, I, th I think some people may be undervaluing Reese just a little bit. I mean, because, you know, was he amazing at Notre Dame? No, not not amazing. But I mean, you know, Drew Pine, uh, he got a, a decent amount of production out of him this year. Um and dude, he's just going to have a lot more talent to work with at at Alabama, of course, than than he's been used to here. And but he did get Drew Pine to complete sixty five percent of his passes this year, over eight yards per per attempt, twenty two touchdowns, and just six picks. 
And they were a much better offense, actually, the back half of the season. And it was kind of a musical chairs that QB there at the beginning. Um, you know, uh, Buckner was kind of struggling and then got hurt. And so once he got his QB and got him settled, the last seven games, they averaged 38.7 points per game, which would have been top 10 in the country had, you know, he kept that up for the whole season. So they were playing a lot better towards the end of the year. And then, of course, he had Jack Cohn the year before that did great. Ian Book had a good career. So, you know, if I'm Bama, I'm not worried. Like we've we've shuffled through offensive coordinators a lot now. Um, I don't think Tommy Reese is going to be the guy to screw that up. So you're going to keep humming. All right. Number 10, speaking of Alabama, we got Pete Golding going from Alabama to Ole Miss as their defensive coordinator. I think I, I'm happy with this as, you know, my last pick in, in this draft. You know, Kiffin, he knew he needed to address the the defense with a solid hire. Um, and he managed to get Golding uh, within within the division from the tide. He's known as an elite recruiter. He He's obviously led some great Bama defenses the last the past four seasons. Um, I know he was obviously given a plethora of talent, uh, but he recruited some of those guys and led Bama to top 20 in scoring D each of those years, been top 10 SP plus defenses each year. So this is a good hire for Ole Miss as they continue to try and build up that that program. Yeah, it's one of those where Bama fans are, you know, for the most part, yeah. happy to see him go. But they've they've yeah. got a different standard than you do at Ole Miss. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm OK with that. That pick for sure. Number 11, I'm going with defensive coordinator Mike Tressel following Luke Fickle from Cincinnati to Wisconsin. And, you know, he was the defensive coordinator for Cincinnati's defense when they made the college football playoff and had that unbelievable defense a couple of years ago. So got to give him at least some credit for that. I know he inherited a very good thing from Marcus Freeman before him. And, of course, Luke Fickle, a defensive guy. So you kind of figure whoever is underneath him is going to be doing a good job. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's – I think he's going to do well. I, yeah. the, any any defensive coordinator under – well, I, I, that's that's selling Mike Tressel short. I mean, he – that 2021 season was was pretty incredible. You got to give him some yeah. credit for that. Oh, absolutely. I think he, Tressel's good. I like it. Um, all right. Uh, last one here. Uh, I'm going with Liam Cohen. Uh, he's the returning as the offensive coordinator at Kentucky – uh, he's coming from the Rams, the Los Angeles Rams. He was actually at the Rams, and he went to, K- to Kentucky, then he went back to the Rams, and he's back to Kentucky. So he <laughs> just goes back and forth. But um, so interesting t- statistics for Kentucky. So in 2020, the year before he was there, they were 107th nationally in points per game. Then Cohen came in and got him to 24th in his one year. So a massive jump there. Um, but then he leaves, and they drop down to 111th. So way in the hundreds that the years surrounding him top 25 the one year he's there um then if you look at total offense it's the same deal 115th before he gets there then 35th while he's there then back to 115th so it's pretty crazy the how poorly they are playing on offense (laughs) the two years like kind of surrounding his tenure there so is it really that drastic is he really that good i don't know (laughs) but it's pretty incredible those numbers so i think he's got to at least make pretty big difference so i think it's good good to get him back yeah definitely worth a shot going back to him so there you have it there is our top 12 let us know in the comments below anyone that we missed uh thank you for watching this episode of the college football bros be sure to subscribe uh like the episode if if you enjoy enjoy the podcast and tell a friend about the show we're trying to grow it so we'd we'd really appreciate that so thanks for watching see you next time